what do you think, you know, you said Triumph folks are self-sufficient, and, and I know that's true, but what do you think the willingness would be of the, of the Triumph community itself to fund the actual um, speed calming devices if the county installed them? I know you manage them. You told me, you know, you take them out at the end of the season, but my feedback from Dale is that <clears throat> that, that type of, you know, removable device is not uh, preferred or I'm not sure what exa exactly what the parameters are there. What do, you, what do you think the willingness of Triumph would be to fund the, those improvements? Um, I can't speak for Illinois. Last night we went to a meeting and we've got a, we have a sewer situation out there because of all the upgrades that are necessary. And we're looking at having to take out a, a community loan to, to, to manage that, and that absolutely has to be taken care of. And so I think that, that um, going to the community and asking them to put funds for speed bumps when right now we're talking about a pretty, a pretty high fee for having a whole sewer system redone possibly, that I don't know how that would go. I can't speak for everyone else. There's 59 people out there. So it would be worth checking. Um, I wanted to respond to two things that Michael said was um, one about having more more police visibility out there for I can't see how that's a cost effective when it's such a small percentage of people in the county so big that it wouldn't be better to figure out a way to slow the people down without having to have them managed by policemen by sheriffs um, because there's there's not enough sheriffs to take care of the county as it is to, to, um, to manage all of the small roads and the side roads. So that has never been anything we've asked for is for more, sheriff, for more uh, sheriff's presence because of that, for more of the uh, police force presence. Another thing that I forgot to mention was as an aside, last fall when we were here, we got a token crosswalk painted in that was, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm sure you thought you were doing something real nice, but it was really kind of an insult because in a half mile road, who was the crosswalk for? For the you know, the five year olds, you know, the five year olds to walk up the community to cross. It was really it was really sad. And within three weeks, the paint was gone. So there's no remnants of that crosswalk. The good thing you did do last fall was give us a twenty. You put twenty five mile hour speed signs through town, which were very valuable. I feel, but they it just so that we had a base mark of something. It didn't do any good to the people. Really slowing down. When, when were those put up? Do you remember? Right after I came in last fall. And, and did you see an, a, a noticeable difference? Nope. It just made us feel that we had been heard. The crosswalk was not a solution. The speed signs made us feel that you guys were trying to do something while you were going to do your study that was going to happen in April. I think the point of the crosswalk wasn't, it wasn't any thinking that people would needed it or would use it. Mm -hmm but it's more a visual signal for the drivers. I think what Dale was trying to do is, there are some real negatives to speed bumps. There's some hazards, some liability issues, especially on a rural road. And he, he was trying to see what could be done that might help with the issue. So the, the crosswalk was more of a visual sign for the drivers. Most drivers, when they see a crosswalk, will tend to slow down. And so that's really what it was about, is just to see whether that would have any effect more than it was thinking that you all needed one to, to get across the other side of town. So that was, that's what the crosswalk was. Glad that the signs maybe helped a little bit. Doesn't sound the cross, like the crosswalk helped at all. And the thing is, the majority of people drive out there, they drive out there all the time. I mean, they're very familiar with that road. So they know exactly where the speed bump is. They know exactly that the crosswalk means nothing. They know that there's no police out there to, to keep, to enforce the 25 mile an hour signs. I mean, one of the worst people that we have driving out there is a, is a really nice black car that lives past us, the female driver. And it's one of the worst defenders of speed. But I can't do anything about her. I can't throw rocks at her. Mm -hmm. You know who that is? Mm -hmm. Could you give us the name later on? Perhaps one of us could call. Her. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, I'll check and be sure of the name. Okay. Yeah, because I don't know everyone past us anymore. But it's a continue. It's a continual violation. And that so so things that happen like crosswalks and things they don't mean anything because the majority of people that drive out there, even the recreation people, they come out there all the time. It's like a hidden secret. I mean, people that find that area love it because it's access to so many quarters of the mountains. And there's such great trails out there. But it's becoming a worse and worse problem for us. And I know that our road's too narrow. I know that our town is ancient. 
but our town wasn't developed to have it be something that people went through. It used to be, the, you know, the, you, the road used to turn around at my house. It was only open in the summer. And now it's a thoroughfare. You know, in some places the road's only 50 feet, not even 50 feet wide. <laughs>